Hey, what's going on everybody? Justin here, and in this video I'm going to be continuing my series of my favorite covers based on the books of different genres that I have in my library. And this one isn't like necessarily a genre per se, but it's definitely uh, a particular kind of book, and it's going to be my favorite covers and designs based on my Folio Society books here, and I got two extra up there. Um, they cover pretty much every genre. They basically just do reprints of really cool books, uh, like either really famous books, pertinent books, classics, stuff like that. Um, obviously, most of my, I, actually, yeah, pretty much all of mine are nonfiction works and everything. Um, some are like really kind of antiquated and outdated, and, but were like kind of gold standards for their time, and others have stood the test of time, stuff like that. Um, actually, I lie. One is not nonfiction, it's the Blue Fairy book by Andrew Lang. So yeah, I do got one fiction uh, book out of all the Foley Society books, but they have, I have just like really epic books just sort of in general. Uh, most of them, well, actually all of them have like slip cases instead of dust jackets. I'm just like, missing a couple because I got them uh, secondhand um, and they work on a good deal, but didn't have the uh, slip cases and stuff. But sometimes the slip cases are designed as you'll be seeing. Um, the covers are really good. The pages are just like super high quality, just like by feeling them. Pretty much everything about them is just, you know, uh, above and beyond. And they're just really cool books to read just because they're so, I don't know, luxurious, I guess. Uh, but in this video, I'm going to be going over my favorite three uh, designs out of the ones that I have. I think I got, let's see how many I got. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, forty. 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 40, 40, 40. About 20 bucks of the Folio Society. Um, and all of them in their own right are pretty much super epic design-wise, except maybe my Anglo-Saxon England one is kind of boring. It's just kind of blue and kind of old-fashioned looking, but everything else has like really cool designs and everything. Um, but yeah, let's just uh, get started. Also, I'll put my links up to the other genres that I've done so far. I've done my favorite science covers and my favorite uh, history book covers. And I will be doing my fantasy covers in the near future, hopefully. So uh, we'll see about that, but let's just get started with my favorite Folio Society ones. The first one is going to be The Vikings by Gwen Jones, and this is supposed to be um, a really, really uh, seminal work sort of in the field of Viking studies. Uh, I think last year I read like four books on the Vikings, and I purposely was like leaving this one out. All those ones that I read were like three or four stars. They're like, you know, they were okay, but not like anything outstanding. And I'm hoping this one is supposed to be like really, really good, which is sort of why I was putting it off till later. Um, though it's definitely high time that I, you know, get to it. So first off, we got sort of the slip case here. Uh, obviously, it's kind of like the matching maroon red uh, kind of color. We got like a long ship with some like Futhark writing um, and everything over it. Just kind of really cool. There's like a dead guy too in the water, if you can see that, with like a sword through him and the fishies and the krakens are like eating him and everything. Just kind of neat. And then you got the, uh, the spine here, Vikings, Gwyn Jones. Um, it is kind of silly. They do have the horned helmet, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, obviously, that's just sort of in the Viking uh, uh, people's like imagination and just the kind of the public conscious of you know Viking stuff. Even though it's pretty much been debunked for about a hundred years now that they never really were horned helmets. I think they technically have excavated one horned helmet, though it didn't really look like that. That's actually more like there's like a horned helmet from the Celtic age that kind of looked like that. Um, there's like one Bronze Age Scandinavian helmet that has like really long horns, but would not have been like used in battle or anything like that. It was probably like a priestly type cast type helmet. Um, but anyways, it's got a really cool spine. It kind of matches some of the other like kind of like warrior ones. Like you've got the Celts and the Normans and stuff with sort of like their like arms and armament and just some sort of like motifs from whatever culture that is. So we take it out of the slipcase. And then we got the same design on the cover. However, we have the, you know, the long ship or whatever. Um, but it's completely surrounded by Jormungandr, which I think is really cool, just having like the Midgard serpent, uh, and it's even, he's even, um, eating his tail kind of like in the lore to kind of hold the seas and the oceans and the, uh, uh, uh Midgard together, which I think is just really cool. Overall, just like an epic looking book, definitely one of my favorites. Like I said, it's kind of hard just to <laughs> narrow these down anyway, so, uh, probably any of these top three ones will probably count as like my favorite at one point in time or another. Uh, but just really cool. And Jormungandr itself has more like kind of Viking uh, motifs just sort of uh, strewn out through it. Um, I don't know if any of these are actually taken from anything specific or if they're just sort of designed um, uh, by the artist. Do, 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 do. 
It just yeah, it says a design by Simon Noise, so it's not necessarily based on anything in particular. And just like look at this like random guy being like choked by like two snakes or I'm not quite sure exactly what they are, but you can see that right there probably. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully like the ring light doesn't make it like too like super shiny, so you can't like see it or anything. Uh, but yeah, definitely one of my favorite ones from the Folio Society. All right, next up, probably go with one of the ones up here that you can't see yet. But I have two volumes here um, out of eight of The Barbarian Invasions of the Roman Empire by Thomas Hodgkins. Uh, this was the first one, uh, which is The Visigothic Invasions. And like I said, there's eight volumes in this series. I have the first two. These are like super outdated. Uh, I think they're originally from the 1890s, I want to say. 1880s or 1890s. Um, but I think it's going to be fun when I do get to it for kind of more of a historiographical uh, purpose, if that makes sense, sort of reading about how people in the very like late 1800s sort of viewed, you know, the fall and the sack of Rome, um, kind of as like more of a seminal event than uh, the scholars today kind of view it was more of a kind of a transitional period more than just like a, you know, cut and dry, you know, Ro the Western Roman Empire just like fell like all of a sudden from the barbarian invasions. That's sort of been disproven as well. But I think it'd be kind of interesting just to sort of look at it, though it is a like volume series of craziness. Uh, but yeah, like I said, this one's on the Visigoths, and we'll look at the slipcase. It looks like we got like, sort of like the Sack of Rome um, or something like that kind of going on in, the, you know, the scenery. This is sort of what it looks like. Some of the buildings are either like smoking or they're on fire, things like that. Or it's just, it might be just like really misty and everything, but looks like kind of like the Sack of Rome going on. And then if I was, you know, if you're in doubt, both the back uh, cover and the front cover have this like super epic wood plate of the actual sack of Rome and there's no no sort of uh disguising that uh in 410 uh AD or CE um Alaric in the Visigoths sacked the city of Rome uh for real in uh, even though the Western Roman Empire didn't fall at the time is because uh the capital of yeah, even just the Western Roman Empire was not at Rome um, for the last like 200 years or so. It was kind of like all over the place. Sometimes it was in Gaul, uh, but lots of times it was in uh, um, like Ravenna and Milan and stuff. So, you know, when Rome fell, it really at 410, it really wasn't a big deal because it wasn't it wasn't really the um, the center of uh, political power anymore, even in the Western Roman Empire. So um, I find that kind of interesting. And plus, as far as sacks go, uh, Alaric basically said, you know, we'll do it for three days, and if you hide in the churches and stuff, we're not going to, like, touch those and everything, so, like, it really wasn't, like, just, you know, all just, like, rape and plunder and stuff. I'm sure some of it probably happened, but overall, it was pretty tame for a sacking. It was more of a, more of a demonstration, and a, more of a show of, show of force, something like that, um, if you study uh, Roman history at all. And, oh, just this woodcut plant is from, if I can find it. We got the binding illustration, Alaric, Visigoth, Sac Rome in 410 from Stefanoni's Storia d'Italia, 1885. And then the slipcase, so the slipcase picture, Roman sacked by the Visigoths by an unidentified artist for, in, it says 19th century. So anyways, I just find this one really enjoyable. Um, in this series, it looks like the slipcases are all the same, but the front uh, covers and back covers are uh sort of the same design of woodcuts but of depend different you know obviously images depending on what the topic is uh because the second one is about the the huns and the vandals and i think attila the hun or one of his um or one of the huns is on the cover of that one but overall this was really cool and it would kind of it'd be like super epic if you had like all eight you had them just sort of like splayed out like that almost like showing all the different woodcuts i think that'd be pretty epic all right and then for my favorite and like i said probably pretty difficult just like picking one but if i really had to come down to it i'm going to go with the celts by nora chadwick and i read parts of this one and it's uh really good and actually let me show you the slip case first we have like kind of like a celtic longsword or celtic broadsword uh superimposed like over through a torque with some like celtic knotwork um i don't know i just think that's just a really really cool design uh i don't know torques are just really cool if you guys don't know what those are um, in Kel especially in Celtic society, they were, uh, like gold, I see, and it's twisted, like gold, well, not gold wire per se, but like kind of like rods of gold that are twisted. And that's where like, you know, torque kind of the word torque is like coming from, uh, in that sense, which, uh, 
almost like gold rope twisted around each other and you would wear it around your neck and actually sometimes you wouldn't be really be able to uh take it off it's sort of a display of power and wealth things like that just a really cool kind of a uh, celtic motif kind of going on so i like that and then you take off take it out of the slip cover uh first we'll look at the spine the celts by nora chadwick and it's got kind of like you know what we consider like kind of celtic iconography um or calligraphy i guess from sort of probably like medieval ireland something like that uh, but then we got like Celtic motifs going on. We got like the torque, uh, like some chariot wheels, stuff like that. And then like a, I don't know if you can see that, but like a, a Celtic fibula, which would like, it's kind of like a brooch um, sort of thing kind of going on. So yeah, I think that one works really well, especially with like all these things um, as well. And then we flip over to the front cover and we've got the same design with the kind of Celtic knot work. Uh, with this long sword kind of going through it and then the torque then plus just tons of Celtic motifs that I are based off some uh, Designs like I have seen some of these sort of before or they're based on designs um, From different like Celtic artwork things like that. Like there's some more like fibulae uh, Oh, like the Bowie eye. Oh, I forgot what that's called the trip. I don't think it's really a triptych, but it's Oh, there's a there's a special word for it. And I'm just like totally like Losing it, and then we got like the ball, or the ball, the, <laughs> the boar, I, I like combine like Gaul and like the boar for whatever reason, um, the boar being a very heavily um, Celto-Gallic uh, symbol, everything like that, I just think it's really cool, then you got like a Celtic cross and everything, and more fibula. I don't know, I just think it's really cool, just sort of the Celtic motif sort of going on, the only thing I wish they would have added, uh, uh, like something uh, in there to kind of uh reinforce sort of the celtic like motif kind of going on i think would have worked really well somewhere would have been uh to add a carnix which um for those who don't know carnix um even though it's not technically just a celtic uh thing um it's very heavily associated with the celts and there's been lots of carnixes found from like celtic burial sites and everything and the carnix was a really long um horn uh from like an ant like a you know antlers or something of like an animal uh that sort of like a war horn um an instrument horn that plays like a really like loud just like brash like sound or whatever um but like i said it's like several carnixes have been found uh at celtic burial sites and everything and it's just really cool it should definitely go check that out uh like online or something but yeah overall i just think this celtic design just really aesthetically pleasing uh i don't know probably my favorite out of all of them if i really had to pick at least like right now um though i do like the hittite ones and everything as well so it's just like you know, it's like picking like favorites of your favorites, so it's kind of silly in a way, but overall, highly, just like I said, highly enjoy all the Foley Society books. Pretty much you can't go wrong with a Foley Society book. Um, and this, let's see, da -da -da -da, binding design, title page freeze and ornaments by Francis Button. So like I said, it's not, you know, an exact like copy of something, but you know, kind of inspired by other Celtic motifs that, you know, from like manuscripts and things like that. So overall, just really cool. Probably my favorite if I really had to pick one. So there you guys have it. My favorite, my three favorite Folio Society books right now, if I had to pick one, uh, or pick three, I guess I picked three, didn't I? Uh, hope you guys enjoyed them. Tell me if you guys have any, well, excuse me, Folio Society books, or if you want to get some, um, and if you are going to get some, like what, uh, which books that you want to get. Uh, like I said, they have lots of fiction books, like my friend Tim, you've probably seen him on here he's got like just i think he's got more fully society books than even i do um i think his favorite one is uh fully society's version uh reprinting of dune i'll put a cover right there because it's pretty epic um you know i still will read dune but this is pretty um pretty sweet cover um but like i said hope you guys enjoyed this video thank you for watching uh if you like the video you know comment like subscribe all that stuff if you want to support the channel definitely check out my etsy shop i got like some plaques um and like uh, hardwood, uh, wooden, hardwood, wooden, yeah, hardwood bookmarks made out of cherry and mahogany with some different designs, and I'm going to keep adding designs, you know, hopefully-ish every week, or at least every other week, something like that, definitely go check that out if you want to get some cool wooden bookmarks, and there, that's it for the video, just thank you for watching, and always remember, read victoriously.